Hi guys, I hope you're well. I miss you guys and I can't wait to see you again. I can't wait to enjoy this weather and this nature and just your presence again. Uh, but we're all a bit stuck right now and um, it has to be this way for a while. Um, I think by now Corona crisis has affected each one of us, even those who are not directly impacted by the illness or we don't know somebody personally in our circles who has been impacted by the illness but i think all of us have been affected by the ripple effects of the social isolation that we are forced to go through and um, i wanted to come out here and share something that has been encouragement to me during this time and uh, lately this this one word has been kind of playing in my mind that i think encapsulates many of my feelings right now and i think probably how many of us of you guys are feeling as well and that word is trapped it's feeling trapped yeah it's not a good place to be think about a mouse stuck in a mouse trap not a good place or um, a fly in the spider's web you know a sticky situation <laughs> So, of course, we're not stuck in the mousetrap or in the spider's web, but we're stuck in our homes in so many different ways. And I think the reason this feeling is so uncomfortable is because it undercuts fundamentally at the very one of the biggest things that God created us to be, and that's free moral beings who are free to choose, free to go, come and go and socialize with who I want to socialize. And now we're stuck and our choices are controlled by circumstances that are outside of our control. Um, so anything that in any way really takes away from that freedom, even a little bit, it straight away causes us feelings of discomfort and fear and anxiety and uh, just really feeling of entrapment, really, because we're not intended to be this way. But it has to be like that for a while. And until then, as I was thinking about it, um, God took me to a Bible story that I'm very familiar with and I think most of us if not all of us know very well and that's but but it's it shown to me in a completely different light of in the light of the circumstance that we're in and that's the story in Exodus and it's when children of Israel they were slaves in Egypt for hundreds of years uh, they've been praying for redemption and finally finally they've just been through a rinse of ten plagues and all the emotional drama and physical exhaustion that they went through in the last several months or weeks and finally Pharaoh lets go of his grip and he says you can leave just get away get out of here and the Israelites millions of people they take their first breath of freedom and they pick up their toys their spoils the gold and the silver and the cattle and they marched out of the land of Egypt with a song of victory in their mouths um, with, led by leaders who are definitely godly leaders accompanied by incredible miracles of God Almighty Himself and they go into the promised land. And we know the story as they're going to the promised land pretty soon they get to a place um, that's where they actually get trapped and that place is Red Sea. So they come, they march up to the Red Sea, there are mountains on either side of them kind of know where to go. It's a dead end. They're stuck. And then when they look back, to add insult to this whole craziness already, they see the army of Egyptians coming after them with the latest uh, military equipment of the day. And they're out there to get them and destroy them. I mean, needless to say, the Israelites freak out. I mean, they are scared to death. They start complaining, whining, moaning, crying, wailing. In Exodus 14, it is described how they were just like, man, we'd rather be in Egypt slaves and die in the desert. And of course, the natural question when we get trapped in anything in our lives, and that's the question that they had was, where is God? Why did God lead us? Was it God that led us here? How come? We, we were completely stuck. Where is God now? Isn't he going to help us? There is no way out. And, um, and indeed, they were completely stuck. But it's fascinating because in the story, we know where God was. God was right there in the middle of them, um, between, surrounded by those circumstances that were entrapping circumstances that were devastating and outside of their control. He was there with a pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night to light the way, to warm them up, to give them shade, to lead them forward. But in this situation, they could not understand, they could not feel him, although he was there right in front of them. And it's so true for us, isn't it, sometimes? 
And as we know the story, God decides to do something incredible for them and he parts the Red Sea. I mean, he parts the sea and they walk through the dry land as if on the dry road. I mean, the Egyptian army, they could see that they were freaking out. Israelites probably couldn't believe and they were freaking out as they were going through the sea. I wish I was there to see that. But you know, without, when I was contemplating about the story, I thought, you know why? You know why God parted the Red Sea for them? It's because God cannot be trapped. Just think about it. God cannot be trapped. We may feel trapped, but if God is with us, there is no way that he can be trapped. Therefore, we are not trapped. We're free if God is with us, no matter what the circumstances are, which is incredible. Think of, I mean, he parted the Red Sea. He could have moved the mountain. Jesus said he could do it, right? He could have struck fire and destroyed the enemy in front of them. He could have put, you know, put a ladder from heaven to earth and they climbed up or something like or zap them out and put them on the other side of the sea. God could have done anything. And that's because God cannot be trapped. He has a thousand ways to provide for us, of which we know nothing. He can bring manna from heaven. He can make water flow from the rock into the desert in as a river. God is never, never trapped. He's never out of options, never. And not only that, God is never caught by surprise. He led them there. He knew where they were going to end. He knew how it's going to impact them. But he was teaching them precious lessons of who he is against who we are. And um, think about it. This Corona crisis, it didn't catch God by surprise. It caught us by surprise. But God wasn't like, oh, oh, Corona, what do I do now? It wasn't in my plan. It wasn't like that for God. You know, the social isolation laws, it didn't catch God by surprise. He didn't get caught off guard. He didn't say, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? Laura is going to need friends. She's a social creature. She'll need, oh, I don't know. I'd, you know, God is never, never caught off guard. So whatever your situation is, of course, we're not trapped between the Red Sea and the, the you know, mountains or army of Egyptians. We have our own armies that are persecuting us. We may be trapped with people in our home that we don't quite get along with. They need to figure that out. Maybe we're stuck with people that we love and love and enjoy spending time with, but we need a little bit more time apart because there has to be that healthy ratio of together and apart. You know, time that we maybe can't afford the same way right now. Or maybe you're stuck in loneliness. You know, that's, I think, my entrapment during this time uh, because, you know, I'm used to hanging out with people and being with friends. And now I'm kind of stuck by myself for most of the time. And that's my challenge right now. But as I was reading this morning, actually, um, in Steps to Christ, in another book, um, it, it spoke for me directly, but um, it said, the quote is like, you know, it's, it's a paraphrase, but it said that the feelings of loneliness that you feel now may be for your good. Your Heavenly Father desires that you will find in Him the consolation, the friendship, and the counsel that you seek in other people. And then the other quote said something to the extent that you can be happy in Jesus, even if you did not have another friend on this earth to share your, to share, you know, your time with. And I thought, wow, you know, and it is so true. It is so true. Whether you're stuck with people or you're stuck by yourself during this time, I just want to encourage you and say, if you make yourself stuck with God, if you stick it out with God, you are not trapped because God has a way out. He can make us free. He can completely set us free in the middle of the circumstances that feel entrapping. And I think that if we make it intentional to become closer, to be more stuck with God than with other people, because we tend to lean on people more for our joy and happiness, I believe God truly is the only one that can fulfill and satisfy our deepest heart desires, who can really set us free, who can really fulfill us and make us joyful and peaceful. And if we really make it a point to, in this entrapment, or this or any other entrapment in our life, to stick it out closer with God, make Him our closer friend, then not only will we be set free, regardless of what's happening around us, but we'll also be free to love others more deeply, more honestly, more sincerely, more, um, more truthfully, and more redemptively. And I think all of us need more of that. In closing, I just wanted to uh, share 
uh, this little video that I saw, I think yesterday somebody sent it to me. And it was a video sent from a guy, a young guy from a Jerusalem. And as you know, just like just now, what a couple days ago, whatever, just a few days ago, it was Easter. Uh, sorry, not Easter. It was it was Passover uh, for the Jewish people. Now the story that we refer to in the Bible, that was the very first Passover in history. That's when they were actually stuck in their homes because there was a quarantine. There was a plague going through. There was a massive deadly disease going through and all of them were, had to be stuck in their houses. So it's very similar to what we're doing now. And only those who put the blood of the lamb on their doors posts, they were spared and the, the plague did not go through them. And in that video, this young guy, he's Israelite, but he believes in Jesus. He was sharing it. He was showing the quiet street and he said, for the first time in 3,000 years, right now, Jerusalem, nobody's on the street celebrating the Passover. Everybody's stuck in their homes. And he was expressing his hope and my hope as well. He said, I really hope that right now, Israelites will look back into the story in the Torah and they will look at the story and they will remember that it was the blood of the lamb that actually set them free when they were entrapped in their homes and they will think of Jesus as their Redeemer. And you know, in the story, he was his heart was going out for his Israelite friends who don't know Messiah yet. But I think it's for all of us as well, because even we may know Jesus, sometimes we still forget that he's the one that truly, his blood is the one that sets us free. So I just want to encourage us again to say that if we are stuck with God, we're not stuck. No matter what your situation is in life, you can never be stuck with God because our God cannot be trapped and He loves us and He loves you and He's almighty. What a combination is that? So just wanted to share that and uh, may God bless you. May you draw closer to Him during this time and to each other. And uh, again, till we meet again. I can't wait. All the best. Enjoy. God bless. Gospel Bites, the Bible in 60 seconds. Leviticus. Leviticus's name comes from the fact that it deals principally with the priesthood, who came from the tribe of Levi. It's sometimes called the Law of Sacrifice. Leviticus is the third book of the Pentateuch. Chronologically, it covers a period of only 30 days. In that time, many instructions were given to Moses and the wilderness tabernacle were constructed. The book does not contain all the instructions that God had for Moses. However, most of the fundamental principles of worship are outlined there. Leviticus sketches out the sanctuary service and provides a revelation of Christ's ultimate sacrifice by using the blood of animals to draw Israel's attention to the price of sin. Sadly, instead of seeing the slaying of animals as evidence of wayward behaviour that need to be amended, they eventually came to view it as a payment for the privilege of sinning. An understanding of Leviticus' sanctuary worship is crucial to open the reader to the truths found in the New Testament it's a central reading for all Bible students, and that's Leviticus in 60 seconds.